Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the start of the Bijou assembly series, I'm going to call it. Um, I'm not going to do any building on video because I think that's kind of boring, but we're going to go over some key aspects of building Bijou and some things that I've been changing and kind of getting um, a guide out there for people who want to assemble this printer. So what we have in front of you here right now is uh, basically the assembled frame. I have put together the new le uh, lead screw Z. I am still going to offer the belted Z, so there'll be two options. The lead screw Z is definitely easier to build and it uses less parts. So it's nice, especially for beginners, and that's kind of the whole point behind Bijou is to get people that are new to 3D printing or at least new to building 3D printers um, and new to Clipper, get them some experience that's not so intimidating. So, um, so we're going to talk about the frame here to start. Pretty straightforward how to build this frame. Um, it's just using these three-way corners. Just note the orientation here. So basically we're losing a little bit of the 200 millimeter height here because of how these corners work. So just make sure that you're building your frame in this orientation. You want the full width here. You want the 200 width on, e on each of these on the X and Y. You want to make sure that you're getting the full 200 width. This is how you assemble it in this orientation. So that's really all to mention about the frame. Um, it's very straightforward. It's just a cube. Um, 200 millimeter extrusions across and you'll get an allen key with these corners here and you just assemble them like that. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do to really square this up. Um, I have just a cheap Amazon square here and the frame does square itself up relatively well. On a small printer like this it's not a massive deal so I don't pay too much attention to that. I do have, uh, of course, the 3D printed feet mounts here. I don't have the rubber feet on, um, unfortunately, and it's like wobbly because I stole these for Defiant, my cross country printer, but I'll have the feet tomorrow for this. Um, pretty straightforward 3D prints. Uh, they generally print pretty easily. I'm probably going to make them a bit stronger and uh, update the CAD here either today or tomorrow, so there'll be a bit stronger mounts here um, for these feet. I do know that they do break a little bit. Um, on a printer this small, generally they'll be okay, but I'm going to make some stronger ones. So again, pretty straightforward. Uh, the feet just attach there with two M5 by 10 nuts and just some twist and T nuts. Uh, sorry, two uh, M5 by 10 bolts with some twist in uh, M5 T nuts. So um, not too too much hardware there for sure. Um, for the lead screw Z, I have just finished designing this and um, I have not printed with it yet. I'm pretty sure it's going to print well and I'm liking it so far. It's relatively easy to assemble for sure. Some key um, benefits here of the frame um, and the single Z or the single lead screw here is the linear rails actually mount directly to the frame on the top. So there's no 3D printed part here on the top. You can see here at the top of the linear rail, it mounts directly with an M3 by eight and a M3 T nut. And then I actually just have some little mounts here for the back. I could have mounted the bottom of the linear rail as well to the frame if we didn't have this little gap here on the top and bottom, then these would fit perfectly in the actual distance between these two. But unfortunately, because of these three-way corners, we have to have a 3D printed mount. So as a potential revision much later on, I might be transitioning to corner plates like this, which are much better. However, they will affect the design of my motor mounts and also my um, idler towers here because this will basically go in place of that. 
So there will be a large revision later on. I'll probably increase the Z height of this frame by 50 millimeters. And I'll switch over to these corner brackets and then um, it's probably going to make the Z even simpler. But for now, this is going to be the MK1 Mark I release in this state. And I'm hoping people mod this and, and you know, post their mods on Discord and I'll definitely upload your mods so other people can enjoy them for sure. So again, uh, that's kind of how the linear rail Z um, mounts. They, they go right up against the side of the frame here. It's meant to really make sure that they're parallel with the frame. I specifically designed them like that. And um, it it's just makes it easier for uh, someone who's a beginner to square these up pretty easily. And then what we have here for the printed parts, uh, pretty straightforward. Basically, um, two 3D printed mounts that attach to the actual uh, MGN9 rails. And then we have a 3D printed uh, nut mount here, which the actual lead screw mount, nut mount is right there. And then we have some M3 hardware here that goes into some threaded inserts that are in this part. That way these parts can be broken down and printed on a smaller printer and you don't have to spend a bunch of time printing a huge printout. In addition, we have a middle, just a middle support piece that goes in there as well. So again, very straightforward to assemble. Um, I'm, I'm really liking the single Z here. So we just have a single NEMA here, we have a coupler, and this is a 150 millimeter lead screw. So, very, very nice. Um, for the actual getting this to mount in the middle, what I did was I left these M5 nuts loose, and then I basically slid this around until my lead screw dropped right into the coupler that I pre-attached to the motor, and that kind of centered the motor right there perfectly. I will put on the GitHub the exact dimensions here from the side of the frame to the side of the mount. So anyone wants to measure this with their calipers, if they would prefer that method, I will definitely do that for you, no problem. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward as far as the, the Z. Um, for the motor pods here, again, really easy. It's just two M5 by 10 bolts and then of course um, I'm just using some M5 twist and T-nuts for both of the X and Y motors here. And then uh, this is a, I believe just a mount off of Thingiverse. It's just an SKR mini mount off of Thingiverse for a 2020. I'm just using the mounting hole here and a mounting hole here. Just mount it really basically at the back there. So that's generally kind of how that mounts. And again once the rubber feet on here it will clear this this NEMA motor on the table. That's why it's kind of rocking like this. I don't have the rubber feet on. So yeah, this is kind of your first kind of step on assembling Bijou if you're going the lead screw method. If you are going the belted version, <clears throat> there's some caveats that you need to know about. The first one being there's more printed parts, of course. And the parts require supports. So for you to actually be able to print these parts, I print them in this orientation. So your bed would be here. And I print it like this. This is one way to print this relatively easily. You will need supports in here. And you will need supports here. Another orientation to print this is printing it like this. You would just need supports here. Normal 3D printers can bridge this. I've definitely printed that many of a time, so this is another potential orientation to print this in. Okay, something to note here on the actual uh, belted Z, there is a hole here for a threaded insert. This is how you tension the belt. So you would have your NEMA 17 here and it will be all the way at the top, and when you tighten this M3 nut, it pushes the NEMA 17 down, and it tightens your belt. So both motor mounts have belt tensioning built into them with an M3 bolt there. 
and you do have to put in a threaded insert. This printer does use threaded inserts. So this is the motor, one motor mount for the Z. The belted Z uses two motors, so you need to print the left and right motor mounts for this. Um, and again, these just kind of mount to the frame relatively easy. Just an M5 bolt on each end there and an M5 T-nut. Um, you also need the upper linear rail mount as well as your idler mount for the belt. So this is kind of the reverse. Your MGN9 rail, and I'll grab one here. Your MGN9 rail actually mounts to the frame at the bottom and then at the top here it mounts to a 3D printed part. That's how that's secured for the belted version. So it is very, very important when you're assembling the belted Z version, and I'll just uh, put this on the outside so you can see it easier. You must make sure, again, your linear rails are parallel. So when you're attaching these parts like so, these must be, you must make sure your linear rail here is absolutely parallel, parallel with one side of the frame. So when you're assembling that, you don't want your linear rail to be like this. And obviously this is an exaggeration, but your print quality is gonna be absolutely terrible. It must be as parallel as you can with the frame and the two MGN nines on either side have to be perfectly straight up and down to get the best print quality. And that's another reason why I don't recommend the Belted Z for beginners is there, there's so much um, double checking that you need to do to make sure these are the correct distance, perfectly straight, so that that linear rail is straight, okay? For the Belted Z, you also have your bed mount. So, an advantage of the belted dead, you only need one of each of these. That's it for the bed. Very, very simple. It's much less plastic than the lead screw version. Your belt will actually run behind the printed part here and it sandwiches the belt in between this and your carriage. So I don't actually have a carriage mounted here, but I'll grab one. So here's your carriage. It mounts here like this, okay? The cut portion of your belt, one piece will go here and one piece will go here to create your loop. And your belt will loop right in front of this part and come down and back around. That's how you complete your belt loop. It's a little bit difficult to show on camera. And obviously I don't have the belt that's that assembled. But you're sandwiching the belt in between this and your actual linear rail carriage. And this will be the part the part of the belt that's cut. So your ends will meet here and they'll be sandwiched onto this and that's what holds them together. Okay, and then you would tension your belt. You can, um, I'll, I'll maybe do a video of one that's assembled with a, a belted Z. Um, it's, it's relatively straightforward once you kind of get around how the belt routes. Um, I just can't show it on this particular printer. So that's how the belted Z works. And that essentially wraps up the first video here. I want to keep these a little bit short on, on assembling the Bijou frame and the Z kind of portion of it. So there's going to be a couple more videos in the series. It should be relatively short. This printer is uh, relatively easy to assemble. We're going to talk about like the XY gantry next. We'll talk about the tool head and that type of thing and some other components and whatnot. So definitely stay tuned for that. For sure, join my Discord. There's a Bijou channel for assembling this printer. We have a couple members assembling a Bijou. I can issue a serial number if you show proof of life that the printer is working. And if you want to support me on Patreon, I'll have my Patreon in the description below. It really helps. 
all the money from Patreon go back into buying 3D printer parts so I can do build series like this. My next one is going to be on Simple Core. So again, thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.